Chapter 3, The Big Day A Desmond Edgley threw back his head and sang, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. You look like a monkey and you smell like one too. And laughed like a drain as Valkyrie blew out her candles. It had been the same lyrics every year since she was old enough to know what a monkey was. She had grown up and matured. Her father had not. Her mum and baby sister clapped and Valkyrie sat back down, grinning. Faint trails of smoke rose, twisting from 18 candles and were quickly dispersed by her mother's waving hand. Did you make a wish? Her dad asked. She nodded. World peace. He made a face. Really? World peace? Not a jetpack? I would have wished for a jetpack. You always wish for a jetpack, her mum said, egg cutting the cake. Have you got one yet? No, he said. But you need to use up a lot of wishes to get something like a jetpack. On my next birthday, I will have wished for it 40 times. 40. I'd have to get one then. Imagine it's death. I'll be the only dad in town with his own jetpack. Yeah, she said slowly. I'll be ever so proud. Her mum passed out the plates, then stood and tapped her fork against the glass. I'd like to make a toast before we begin. Toast, said Alice. Thank you, Alice. Today is a big day for our little Stephanie. It's been a big week, actually, with the exam results and the college offers. We've always been proud of you, and now we're delighted beyond belief that the rest of the world will be able to see you the way we see you, as a strong, intelligent, beautiful young woman who can do whatever she puts her mind to. Toast, said Alice wisely. You've been in our lives for 18 years, and you have brightened every single day. You've brought joy and laughter to this house, even when times were tough. Her dad leaned in. It is not easy being married to me. And today is also the day that Gordon's estate passes into your name. You are now the sole custodian of his books, the owner of his house, and the spender of his money. And even though you've known that this was coming since you were 12 years old, you never slackened off. You never took anything for granted. You finished school, you got excellent results, and you made sure you faced the future on your own terms. We couldn't be prouder of you, honey. Before her mum could start crying, Valkyrie's dad stood up. He cleared his throat, uh, pondered a bit, and then began. It is no secret that I always wanted a son. Valkyrie howled with laughter and her mum threw a napkin at her husband, who waited until things had calmed down before continuing. I thought that having a daughter would mean there'd be pink everywhere and I'd have to take her to ballet lessons and when she was old enough to have a boyfriend, I'd be really weird around him. Thankfully, none of this turned out to be the case. Valkyrie blinked. You were extraordinarily weird around Fletcher. No, you're misremembering. I was cool. You kept touching his hair. I have no recollection of that ever happening. Des, her mum said, you were really, really weird to that boy. Can I be allowed to finish my speech? Can I? Thank you. So, to recap, I never wanted daughters. But when Stephanie was born, I looked into her big eyes and I was so overcome by both her cuteness and the baby fumes that I decided to let bygones be bygones and start over. It was a noble and selfless act by me, but you were only two days old at the time, so you were probably too young to remember it. Probably, said Valkyrie. And now, look at me, her dad said. Eighteen years on, and I have two daughters, and the smaller one can barely walk in a straight line, let alone do ballet. What age are you, Alice? Four? Five? Eighteen months, said Valkyrie's mum. Eighteen months, and what have you to show for it? Do you even have a job? You're a burden on this family. A burden, I say. Toast, Alice responded, and squealed as her dad scooped her up and did his face hugger walk around the kitchen. I'm pretty sure that when that speech started, it was about you, Valkyrie's mum said. But then he got kind of distracted. Edez, Edez, don't you think it's time to give Steph her birthday present? Present, Alice yelled as her dad held her over his shoulder by one ankle. Fair enough, wifey. <clears throat> I suppose they can't be put off any longer. Steph, 
Now that you have large sums of money, you can of course buy one of these brand new if you so want it. But I like to think that a second hand one, bought by your parents, would have a sentimental value that you just wouldn't be able to get in a Valkyrie sat up straight. You got me a car? I didn't say that. She stood. Oh my God, you got me a car. Again, I didn't say that. It might not be a car. It might be a drum kit. Is it a drum kit? No, it's a car. Toast, Alice yelped. Ah, yes, sorry. Valkyrie's dad said, setting his youngest uh, daughter back on the ground. She wobbled and fell over and started laughing. You are so dumb, her dad murmured. Valkyrie ran to the front door, yanked it open and froze. There in the driveway was a gleaming Ford Fiesta, and it was orange. She'd been in an orange car before. One of Skullduggery's spare cars had been orange, but this, this, she couldn't help herself. It looks like an Oompa Loompa, she blurted. Do you not like it? Her mum asked at her shoulder. I asked for the colour specifically, her dad said. The salesman said it wasn't a good idea, but I thought it might be extra safe, and there was the possibility it could glow in the dark. It doesn't, though. If you want a different colour, we can bring it back. I mean, the salesman would probably laugh at me, but that's okay. He was laughing enough when I drove off in it. She walked up to the car, traced her fingertips along the side. The interior was dark green, just like an Oompa Loompa's hair. She looked back at her parents. You got me a car. You got me a car. Her mum dangled the keys. Do you like it? I love it. Valkyrie caught the keys and slipped in behind the wheel. Her car had a very nice dashboard and a very nice smell, and her car was very clean. She adjusted her rear view mirror in her car and slid her seat back in her car, and it was her car. It wasn't a Bentley, and apart from the colour, it wasn't very flashy, but it was her car. You are the Oompa Loompa, she said, patting the dash, and I love you.